Yes, finally, we're live. Hi there, mom friends. It's Karen Haley, the digestive coach for moms. And I've been having some technical difficulties today. I am a health coach. I'm not a technical guru. So sometimes we have some technical glitches, but I think we're online. I think we're okay. Thumbs up if things are okay for you on your end. So hi there. Hi. Oh my goodness. What a week it has been. I am glad that I did not have a Facebook live session over the weekend because you would not have wanted to see me. We have had, I don't know about you guys, if you've had this in your house, but at our house, we have been having this sickness that we all just keep passing back and forth to each other. It's getting crazy. So I'm wondering, is that happening for you guys too? I know it's happening here in Maryland because I've been talking with my kids' teachers at the elementary school and they're saying that teachers have the crud and all the kids have the crud and it's just getting passed around. And then at my older son's school, it's some kind of stomach bug that's going on with them. But just, ugh, you know what I mean? Gross, gross, gross. All of the craziness that's been going around finally hit me. And I don't know why it took it hitting me for me to say, you know what? I need to do a video on this. I need to share with some moms some of the remedies that we use at our house. Did you hear that? Remedies. <laughs> Remedies that we use at our house. I want to share some of those with you so that you can help your family heal too. So I use a lot of natural remedies, things that are already in my house. And so I wanted to share those with you. I know that there's the over-the-counter kind of things and there's the doctor and there's sometimes you need the prescription. But if it's something more mild, you probably could treat it in your own home with things that the cool thing is you probably already have them in your house. So I want to go over those things. I have this table with all of these things on it and I wish you could see it. I don't, I don't think you guys can see, actually see that far, but I wish you could because it's got all these things on it. I'm hoping that we have time that I can share them all with you today. Um, but before I do, I just wanted to mention a few things, just general ideas about health and getting healthy when you get sick at your house. Now, the first thing is, number one, this video is really just for educational purposes only. You are a mom and you gotta use your own common sense on what to do when your kids are sick. You know when it's a, a little bug and you can nip it in the bud quickly and you know that sometimes they do need to see the doctor. So I'm gonna ask you to just use your own common sense. But what I have here for you are some really wonderful remedies that I know your grandma or your great grandma used to heal naturally. But anyway, sometimes we have to just use our own common sense with whether it's time to actually go to the doctor or not. And I am certainly a proponent of going to the doctor when it's necessary. And then when my kids can use, or me can use some of these natural remedies that I have right in my kitchen, we do that too. Um, so that's number one. Number two, something that I've really noticed about these natural remedies is that it's best if you get on it quick. So when you see that little sniffle that your kid has, or when you get to start the sneezes, or for me, it's when I start to get the pressure, um, like that little pain here in my sinuses, that's when I know it's time to use it. The quicker you can get on these remedies, the quicker it's going to heal you. So get on it as quick as possible. Don't wait until it's full blown and you're just you know laying in bed and you're a mess. So try to get to it right away. And then the other thing I just wanna mention is that, um, lost my train of thought. Okay, the other thing, oh I know, the other thing that I wanted to mention is that it can take some time. So keep that in mind too. Number one, you want to get on it early. And number two, it can take some time to heal from it. So give it the time. You know, it might need, take a few days. Give it a few days. And then, while I'm thinking of it also, when it takes those few days, the other thing you'll want to do is continue these remedies a few days after you feel better. Because I know, I know we're all guilty of this. I've done this sometimes where I will think I'm healthy. In fact, I did that this time too. I got a little bug over the weekend. And remember, that's what kind of got my um, pants in gear to get this video going because I figured you guys had this problem too. But when this happened to me and I started to feel better, I got busy. By Monday, I got busy, right? I have three kids and life started, you know, taking a turn and I had to drive everybody where they needed to go and work. So I just kind of, you know, oh, I'm okay now. And I slacked off a little bit. So don't do like I did. Stay right on top of it through a couple few days, even, even when you feel well. 
Okay, so that, those are just some general tips. Now, let's get to the good stuff. This is my kitchen remedy. Oh, I wish you guys could see this. Okay, so this is my kitchen remedy basket here. Number one, here, I'm going to see if I can get this a little bit closer. This is ginger. Ginger, I always have on hand. In fact, you can keep ginger in your freezer, so there's really no reason why it even has to go bad. You can keep it in your freezer for a really long time. And this you can get just at your regular grocery store. So ginger is antiviral, it's antibacterial, and it is also really wonderfully anti-inflammatory. So it's not just good, and you know, since I'm talking to moms, my moms with my um, gut-loving moms that have gut issues too, this isn't just for your healing for colds and flu. This is perfect if you also have digestive problems. So this is great if you have a cold, but also you can use it just year-round to help you with your digestion as well. It's great for nausea too. And so how would you use this? So you can just like... See, you can just like break this off here, and my ginger's a little old. See, that should just kind of break off quickly. But, and I just got this today. Oh, smell-o-vision. We need smell-o-vision. I wish you guys could smell this. I love the smell of ginger. So all you're going to do is just break off a little bit. And I have one of these. Do you guys have these? This is a microplane. And then all you have to do, a lot of people will peel this, right, because you're not going to want to eat the skin. But something that's really cool when you use this microplane is that when you grate it, so you're going to grate it like this, when you grate it, and I'm not going to do it because I'm not in my kitchen, <laughs> but when you do it, it the pulp is what's going to come through on this side, and the, um, the skin stays up here. Very cool. So you don't even have to peel it. I never really even peel it. And you want to get, if you're using this for healing from colds and flu, you want to get about a half a teaspoon full. Okay, so you're just going to grate it. And then this could go in a smoothie. You could put it in your juice in the morning. You can even cook with it. Lots of different um, dishes use ginger, like Asian dishes. So you can do a lot with this. But when you're sick, you want to just put it in some a cup of water with some other of these remedies I'm going to talk about, and then this is wonderfully healing, antibacterial, antiviral, and also really good for your digestion. So if you're having the flu, if you're feeling nauseous, like you're going to throw up, you know that feeling where you're just not sure if the throw up is going to happen or not? If you're feeling like that, ginger is really good. It just really calms and settles your stomach. Okay, so that's ginger. What else do I have here? Along the same lines as ginger, I want to mention this one too because you can use your microplane for it too, is this really simple garlic. Antiviral, antibacterial, and garlic is actually also antifungal. So this is a really good one for your gut as well. When you use garlic as a healer, you want to use it raw. So you're going to want to um, peel it and take take a clove off. I'm not sure. This is new. Let's see if I can get it off quickly. There we go. So you're just going to peel it, get a clove off. You can crush this or you can chop it up, but you want to make sure that you do it raw and you want to make sure that you, again, wish I had smell-o-vision. Smells so good. Um, you want to make sure that you let it rest after you, whoops, I dropped it, but after you um, chop it up or you crush it, let it rest for about a minute because that releases the healing compounds. There's a, a compound in garlic called allicin. It's not like the name allicin. It's spelled A-L-L-I-C-I-N, allicin, and that's where all the healing properties, the antioxidants in this um, garlic come from. So when you let it sit for a couple minutes, you release the allicin, and that's the healing property in this. Again, this could go in a smoothie. It can hide pretty well in there. You could also put it in your juice, but if you want to have it with your dinner, you could just put a little olive oil and, you know, a couple spices, and then you can eat it with bread or on a salad. And of course, we um, here at Gut Love would either have grain-free or gluten-free bread, and so then you can eat it like that. So super... This all, I mean, this is like my first go-to remedy always when I just want to knock it out. And if you have sinus pressure, pain at all, oh my gosh, this is wonderful for that. If you're having active gut disease, you may want to, like you're in the middle of a flare, you may want to wait on this one because it can be a little bit harsh on the digestive system, but this one's really good if your symptoms are quiet. Okay, what else do I have here? My goodies. Okay, this is turmeric. That's turmeric. Okay, and this is turmeric powder. 
you can buy it in the grocery store, not in like not in like your regular Safeway Wegmans kind of grocery store usually, but you can buy the whole thing. It actually looks a lot like ginger, um, but you can buy the whole thing as well. I've seen it in my um, local health food stores, but this is it in powder. And the compound in turmeric that is the anti-inflammatory compound that's going to help you when you're sick or also when you have gut troubles is curcumin. And so the curcumin works best when it gets released with just a little bit of black pepper. So if you're using this, you want to also use it with a pinch of black pepper. And how do I use this? I drink, I use this every morning in my morning detox drink. And so I use this as a preventive. So it's wonderful for anti-inflammatory properties for your gut as well as your immune system. So that's how I use this one. So that's turmeric. Um, you can also take, which I also do, you can also take curcumin capsules. And so those are really more for gut health. But while we're talking about curcumin, I might as well mention it for gut health as well. You can also take that as well as a supplement. And they even make the curcumin capsules with the black pepper um, in them. So it helps activate the um, curcumin when it gets inside your body. Okay, ooh, one of the things I absolutely love for healing when you have cold or flu are teas. Teas are so warm and soothing and if you can get your kids interested in tea when they're young then they're going to be much more apt to drink it when they get older and maybe they're having some of these um, sicknesses that, like that my kids and probably your kids are dealing with right now. So I want to show you three of my favorite teas. This is Throat Coat. This is made by a company called Traditional Medicinals, so that's throat coat. And this is awesome, I wanna read you some of these. This is great when you have a sore throat, but I also love this, again, isn't it interesting that so many of these are good not just for your um, congestion and your cold and your flu, but they're also awesome for your gut. So uh, you can use this for your gut health as well. And it has things like licorice root, slippery elm bark, marshmallow root, and these are all really soothing for the gut lining. And they're also soothing for your throat. So that's throat coat. You can get this one right at your grocery store, any grocery store. And then there's two that are really healing for your stomach. So again, whether it's due to a flu, an upset stomach bug, or it's due to having gut troubles, you definitely want to make tea part of your daily routine. And these are two really wonderful healing teas for your gut as well as for your um, symptoms like colds and flu. So there's this one. This is chamomile. And this is what I really want to talk to you guys about is the peppermint part in this peppermint tea. But it also has green tea in it. So if you can get your peppermint tea with green tea, so you, now you've got an antioxidant and a tummy soother. Like win-win, right? So here we go. Green tea with peppermint. And then there's this one, the chamomile tea as well. All right, and then the throat coat tea. So tea is wonderful. And it just, doesn't tea just feel soothing when you drink it? Love tea. Tea is great. Okay, I ha I've gotten to my absolute favorite remedy here. Here it is, it's a big one. And only because I buy it in really large quantities, but it is Bragg apple cider vinegar. Bragg apple cider vinegar. Love this stuff. Now, it doesn't have to be Bragg apple cider vinegar, but when you do get your apple cider vinegar, look for one that says of the mother. You want to have those enzymes that are down at the bottom. Can you guys, I don't know if you guys can see on the screen, but you want to have those enzymes that are down at the bottom of the um, apple cider vinegar. Bragg is really my favorite. I actually went to my favorite grocery store and um, I'm not going to mention it because I'm going to say something that's not so good about the company, but if you listen to my videos or watch anything that I do, you know my favorite grocery store. So I'm talking about that favorite grocery store. But anyway, I bought their store brand it just was not as good. It even said of the mother, it was organic. No, it just, it did not compare to Bragg. And so I would say when you're thinking about what you should splurge on for your, this little kitchen remedy arsenal that you're gonna create, splurge for the good apple cider vinegar. It, it really is worth it. 
Now, why do you want apple cider vinegar? Apple cider vinegar is like, have you guys seen that movie, um, My Big Fat Greek Wedding, where it's all about Windex heals and um, fixes everything? Okay, so apple cider vinegar is my Greek Windex. Apple cider vinegar, we use it in our house for pretty much everything. It's like, it, all anybody has to do in our house is sneeze, and I'm getting out the apple cider vinegar. It's crazy. And it's vinegar, and so for kids, sometimes it's not the most palatable thing. So I'm a huge fan of putting it in smoothies. I'm not a fan of lying to your kids and pretending it's not there, but there's just something about, you know, just get putting it in and telling your kids, hey, yeah, I put it in there with the pumpkin seeds and the chia seeds and the flax. I just, you know, I put it all in there, and yes, there's some apple cider vinegar in there, and you won't even taste it because if you just use a little bit, they won't even taste it. Now, for grown-ups, I don't think it really tastes that bad. If you put it in some water and you just drink it, my 15-year-old does it as a shot. And, he, no, he doesn't love the taste of it, but he, I don't know, something about it, he just says it just clears up his sinuses and he just feels really good. I'm not going to have it as a shot, but I like it with just a nice glass of, you know, 8, 12 ounces of water. So that's wonderful. And, um, apple cider vinegar is antibacterial, antiviral, anti-parasitic so this is some really powerful stuff and this is part of my prevention program I drink this daily and again I love this because it's not just great for your uh, colds and flu and preventing them and keeping them at bay it's great for your gut health as well it's wonderfully detoxifying for your entire system so it's something you really want to start taking daily if it's not part of your routine already and like I said it's not that bad you can put it in some a glass of water to me it tastes like a tart lemonade and you want to use about one tablespoon of apple cider vinegar and I would work my way up to it I would start at maybe a, at even an eighth of a teaspoon and work your way up because here's something that I found working with clients and also with myself when you have gut issues it can be really acidic on the system so again if you're in the middle of a flare for your gut issues you probably want to wait until the flare has passed before you add the apple cider vinegar um, and if you use too much of it I've noticed it can give me ulcers in my mouth so I if that happens I just then back off on it from for a couple days and then I'm able to start it again but when you do start it you want to start at a low dose and work your way up and about one tablespoon a day is a good amount to kind of just fend off those bugs and keep the immune system lifted what else do I have here for you? Okay, so this is Sambucol, and um, really you could buy this anywhere in any brand. I do have a favorite brand I'll tell you about, but the bottom line here is what's in here is something called black elderberries. And I have black elderberries, and we do make our own elderberry syrup, which is wonderfully boosting for the immune system, and my kids drink it. In fact, you can have it every day as a preventive, and then when you're sick, you can just bump up the dose. So most of them, you know, you should definitely look at the label, but most of them, it would be like a teaspoon for an adult for daily use, and then you can bump that up to two teaspoons, and you can have that multiple times a day, something like three, four times a day. You should definitely look at the package. But I, I like to make my own because then I can control the ingredients. I don't know exactly what ingredients are in this one. This one's pretty good, but I do have a favorite one if, when I buy it from the store, and it's called Nature's Answer. If you can find that one, I really like the ingredients, and for some reason it just seems to work a little bit better on me and also on my kids. But it really is so easy to make. I get the black elderberries from a website company called Rose Mountain Herbs, and then you can make your own. In fact, I found a recipe. I'm a huge fan of if something ain't fixed, don't, uh, I said that wrong. If something ain't broken, don't fix it. So I'm a huge fan of not reinventing the wheel. And so I found a recipe right online. And I want to say, you can check this out. I want to say I found it at um, Wellness Mama, wellnessmama.com. I'm pretty sure that's where I found it. It was a long time ago, but I'm pretty sure if you guys are familiar with Wellness Mama, you know how awesome she is. And I'm pretty sure that's where I got the recipe. So you can go to Rosebound Herbs or probably even Amazon. You can get the black elderberries. They're, they look like small dried blueberries. So they're smaller than blueberries, but they look very much like that. And you can make your own. It's so easy to make your own. And then you can add a little bit of sweetener, maybe a little bit of honey or nothing. I don't really add anything to mine. Um, and I think it tastes fine. It almost tastes like grape juice.
it's really, really um, wonderful for your immune system. So that's one you could use as a preventive, but you can also use it when you're sick, just in a more intensive way. Let's see, okay, lemon. Okay, we all probably have heard of this one, right? This is really high in vitamin C. I know a lot of people think that vitamin, the, the big fruit, the big citrus fruit for vitamin C is oranges, right? But vitamin C can also be found in other citrus fruits, in fact, in high amounts, and lemons are one of those. So when I'm talking about lemons, I'm not talking about lemon juice, not the kind that you can squeeze out of a bottle. I'm talking about fresh lemon juice. You wanna go ahead and get a fresh lemon. And the cool thing is, in our country, at least in the United States, you can get them year round. So you want to get a fresh lemon and I would use about a quarter to a half of the lemon and you're going to squeeze it in water or squeeze it into juice. You can, you can put it in anything. You can even just, you know, eat it if you don't mind the sour taste of the lemon. One of my kids actually loves that, does anything for a lemon to put it in his mouth. I don't know. <laughs> it's certainly not going to hurt you. The one thing I do want to mention about the lemons is that there's actually 5 to 10% more vitamins in the skin than there is in the lemon juice. So you want to save the skin and you can use that same, remember the microplaner from before? You can use that same microplaner and you can zest it. It's called zesting. And then you can put some of the yellow part inside your drink, whatever drink you happen to put it in, whatever dish you want to put it on. You can put it on anything, really. And you're going to get huge amounts of vitamins, 5 to 10% more than even by just juicing. So you definitely want to use the zest as well. And, um, oh, I know what I was going to say. One other thing about the lemon. You just want to do, and you want to zest it just until it turns white. If you continue zesting with the grater, then you're going to get that pith, and it's kind of bitter tasting. So you just want to do just the just the yellow part. Don't uh, don't continue to zest after it gets white. Okay, so that's that. Oh, let's see what else. Oh, one of my other favorites, coconut oil. Are you using coconut oil in your house? I mean, everybody's heard about the benefits of coconut oil, right? Antiviral, antibacterial, antiparasitic. This one you can use as a preventive. You can also use it while you're in the midst of having your cold and flu symptoms. This I love to put in my kids' smoothies. I love to cook with it. Coconut oil is wonderful. You can bake with it as well. We use it you know, all the time in our house. It's one of our main oils. So coconut oil, it's also wonderful for your gut health. Again, right? Healing your digestive system and healing a cold and flu, it all kind of goes together. It just makes sense. Let's see what else. I wanted to mention, this is not something obviously that you would eat, but I wanted to mention my cleaner because I know so many people, when the whole family comes down with a sickness, they freak out, right? And they get the, the spray and they're spraying the um, antiviral, antibacterial spray, whatever it is, they're spraying it all around the house. And they're typically full of chemicals and harsh um well, harsh chemicals that then can get inside your system. And if you have sensitive lungs, asthma, even if you have things like um, dermatological issues like um, eczema, it can just make you really sensitive. So you want to try to choose the most natural cleaner that you can when you're trying to get rid of the germs in the house. And that's what I really needed to do a lot earlier because if I had done that, we wouldn't be passing all these germs back and forth. But... <laughs> Better late than never, I finally got on the Let's Heal the Whole House bandwagon and used this all over. This is Clean Well. Do you guys know Clean Well? Oh, love their products. They make a really good um, hand sanitizer, and they also use the same thing, this thyme oil. Thyme is really wonderful. It's very antibacterial. It kills lots of germs. And so this is a natural way that you can clean up the germs all over your house. So I've been squirting this all over the house lately. So Clean Well, that's really wonderful to just, not to ingest, but to clean up all over your house. Okay, let's see. Ooh, last but not least, Manuka honey. Manuka honey. Have you guys heard of this? You probably have heard of honey before to help with a cough. There have been studies that have shown that um, dark honey especially can 
suppress a cough as good as, if not better than, any cough syrup that's on the market. So along those same lines, Manuka honey, which is actually even a better honey. The thing about Manuka honey that's better than, well, let me even back up here. Let me tell you what it is. Manuka honey is a honey from New Zealand and it is made from the bees in New Zealand. They pollinate a bush called the Manuka bush. And so that's where it gets its name from. But this is a much more powerful honey than any honey that you would buy on the market. It has more enzymes, so it's very enzyme rich, and those enzymes turn into antibacterial properties inside your body. And so this, again, not only is this great when you have the sniffles, a cold, um, even some stomach symptoms, not only is it great for that, but this is fabulous for Crohn's disease, colitis, IBS, small intestinal bacterial overgrowth. So even as a preventive, if you're trying to keep your gut healthy, if you're trying to keep your your body healthy. This goes in my little morning drink every morning along with that apple cider vinegar I was talking about and also the juice of a lemon with a couple other things just to detox and to keep my immune system up. But always Manuka honey. And I can get this right at my regular grocery store. I have to tell you ladies, this is a pricey one, but you have to kind of pick and choose. When is it worth it to spend the price and when do you want to save? It's really worth it to spend the money on this. And you only need just a little bit. You don't need a lot of this. And so this jar, oh my goodness, I wanna say it was maybe $20. I know, sticker shock, right, $20. But it has lasted me months and months and months. I might buy two of these a year. So you don't have to buy it that often. And it's so worth it if you're trying to heal your gut from gut struggles or if you're having the cold and the flu run around your house. And this is one of those that your kids will definitely take because it tastes good, right? Some of these you have to put in a smoothie or put in a juice or something. This one actually tastes good. You can give it to them straight. So it's going to boost their immune system when they have a cold and it's also gonna help when there's a cough, when they have an active cough. I give this to my little one at night when he's prone to coughs and I give this to him at night to help his cough, okay? Oh, there's one last thing. I just wanna show you one last thing. This is my favorite brand for vitamin D. It's called Thorn Research. And vitamin D is also an immune system booster. So when the cold and flu hits my, hits my house, we bump up our vitamin D levels too. And we can do that through cod liver oil because that's high in vitamin D. Or you can also just do a vitamin D supplement as well. Okay, I think that's it. That's my medicine cabinet, my kitchen medicine cabinet. And I want to share one last thing with you guys. I have these two concoctions. One is a preventive. It's something I drink every day to keep my immune system healthy for colds and flu and also for gut health. And the other recipe is a um, I'm sick <laughs> concoction. It's a drink with some of these things in it, my, some of my favorites in it that really helps wipe out those things quickly. Like I said, you want to get on it as soon as possible. And so this drink that I'm talking about would be fabulous for that. I would love for you guys to be able to get your hands on these recipes. And so what I'm going to do is I created a, um, a web page with these recipes and I want to show you the link. So, and I, you know, I'm a digestive coach. I am not tech savvy. So here's what I'm going to do. After I'm done with this Facebook Live, in the description, I will post the link. And so hopefully that will work. If some of you try to get to the link and you can't open it, then please let me know. But I hope it works. I'm going to put this link right inside the description for the post. And then you guys can get the two recipes that I most use with these ingredients that I showed you. That is it. I hope that this information is helpful for you and for your family during this, what seems like, awful cold and flu season. Oh my goodness. I really hope you guys can stay healthy. I hope some of these remedies can help you stay healthy. I hope you're able to use the recipes from the link that I'm going to share with you guys. And next week, we're going to come back here. You know what? And speaking of the, speaking of next week, I've been doing these Facebook Lives now for a few weeks. I'm really enjoying them, and I've started this little pattern of doing them on Thursdays. So look for another one next Thursday. I'm not quite sure what the topic will be yet, but look for the next one next Thursday. And so until we meet again, when we're all super healthy, until we meet again, I'm going to wish you guys much gut love and happiness all week. Mwah! You guys take care. Bye for now.